Hello, I'm Georgiana Constantine Park. I made this video to uh, talk a little bit about globalization. So the, uh, the concept of globalization, one of the things uh, is very important, is to remember the globalization or to understand the globalization has been with us since the very beginning. There has always been a time where people, whether in small communities or big countries or immense empires, there's always been a time when we have traded with each other, when ideas have come and gone, when we have collaborated and we have exchanged things. Uh, you can look, for instance, at something as simple as the spread of the Abrahamic religions where you have uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, out of which Christianity and Islam have really gone and circulated from the Middle East to Europe and then to the Americas and then to Asia, and it really has been a global phenomenon. And then you obviously look back into history and you can see empires like the Roman Empire trading with the Egyptians, and then uh, the Silk Road, and then um, just a lot of it, the British Empire, obviously, um, a lot of things that have happened uh, where trade was, was, was done. And though empires did cause a lot of suffering, and of course they weren't uh, all good because there are good and bad things everywhere, uh, they did engage in trade, and that did lead to the spread of um, also ideas. So it just it didn't just lead to the spread of goods, it led to the spread of ideas, to the spread of religions, to the spread of languages, and so on and so forth, which is why we have the Romance languages that we do in Europe nowadays, and of course the Germanic languages that are there as well, and so on. So even if something that isn't necessarily the best thing uh, goes on and, and, and spreads around the world, from that th do come some things that are um, uh, if used correctly, that are good. So, um, I, the sad part about, about things like empires, other than the suffering that they caused in certain circumstances, because of course you can't look at something and say this was completely bad and nothing good came of it. That's a simplistic attitude and it's not the way that you can analyze and learn from mistakes in the past or learn from good things in the past. Um, but one thing that, that, um, I was, um, talking about a few days ago was just how the uh, people in World War II, the scientists, they were trying to, to continue their um, um, spread of ideas and their exchange of ideas. And they weren't able to do that because of the war <clears throat> and how dangerous it was to do that. And they were just decrying the fact that this wasn't possible anymore. So whenever there was violence and whenever there were things uh, that happened uh, that, that, that tore people apart, then this interconnection and collaboration really wasn't possible. And we have gotten a lot of good things from all of this, this uh, trade and interconnection that we've had all throughout the ages. So one of them, something that I can talk about, and I can speak about my experience in this respect with globalization and its intricate uh, way of, of functioning, um, as it was manifested in my country, modernization, westernization, whatever it is you want to call it, um, because Romania was, was part of the socialist regime, it took a um, period, a very long transition period, and I still believe that we're in that transition period uh, as we speak, finding our way to a free market um, type of society. I have seen some things happen in my country that speak to really what globalization is about the fears, the hopes, the defense of it, and, and the blind hatred of it, and the good and the bad. So growing up, there weren't a lot of things that you could find in terms of um, goods on the market because we were just coming out of the socialist regime and it was difficult to, to really start to build what a, a capitalist society would look like. Slowly but surely, however, a lot of things did start popping up on the market. I still remember the first time that a, um, a, a supermarket was uh, was open. And I remember going in there and, you know, we were happy and a lot of other people were. 
Um, and then a, a few years after that, people were starting to decry the farmer's markets, which we used to go to before the supermarket, and saying these were so much better, and why aren't we doing this anymore? Nobody's buying Romanian products anymore, and our economy is doing this and doing that. And um, I remember thinking, wow, you know, yeah, this food isn't actually the greatest. It doesn't really have a lot of taste to it. I'm not a fan of GMO in general and other stuff that they put in food. And I remember... Th uh, thinking about how food used to taste when I was a child and so I'm like, that's not the same. And then something happened. Farmers markets started becoming a big thing again. And Romanian products started becoming an important thing again. And on the side of religion and tradition, there were a lot of discussions on that um, in that area as well and a lot of people were saying we're being attacked and 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 we we feel that this is coming from outside and this is very difficult for us to deal with and we don't want to lose our traditions we're not supposed to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to say and then something started happening there too big part of my generation revolted against the idea of um, all of these attacks that were that were being brought by certain elements in society and that they were that were saying um, we don't need these because these these traditions are, are uh, backwards and uh, against modernity and these people rose up and said that's not true and they gave logical arguments for that why that wasn't true and they started practicing these beautiful traditions that we have all over again not that they had ever stopped but they were in danger for a little bit because of all of the conversations that were around them the conversations are still there but in the meantime along with those conversations there is a resurgence of people wanting to go back to tradition people wanting to go back to the farmer's market people wanting to buy romanian and this is something and the flexibility that you cannot get within a socialist regime, especially one that has tried to isolate itself from the world. Why? Because unlike the market, the state doesn't, a socialist state doesn't have to give you anything. It just has to keep you alive and try to have you not revolt against them. But the free market of ideas and goods and everything has found a way to push aside those elements in society that we as Romanians found to be uh, too aggressive or, or found to not like. So now we're getting all of these options. Somebody can go and buy something in the supermarket. Somebody else can go and buy something in the farmer's market. They can go and buy stuff from both. And you can go to church or you can not go to church. Nobody's going to look at you and uh, fire you for going to church or uh, keep your career from um, going up through the ladder um, because you're going to church, as you would see in the communist regime or the, the really the socialist regime. So even though there might be some negative elements that come along with this, and of course there are, nothing is perfect, no system is perfect, and goodness, globalization obviously has its pros and cons, um, it's just good to be balanced when you approach this conversation and this concept. Don't fear it as if it's the boogeyman. Don't love it as if it's your God. Understand it for what it is and analyze it and see how you can use it to your advantage. And this is something that I believe Everybody must do with all elements in their life. I believe that the individual has the um, obligation to educate themselves, especially because we do live in this wonderful time of such amazing technology and information at our fingertips. Now, I have heard, of course, talk about, well, China isn't going to deliver medication to America anymore. And so because of that, globalization obviously is not working and this is very dangerous. So, personally, when I look at this, 
I understand that there are different layers in the conversation. First of all, China produces a lot of things. 90% of those things, probably, I might be wrong, but I would say the majority of those things, you can go without. In a situation such as this, during a pandemic, you don't necessarily need uh, some cute little skirt that you saw on a website. You don't necessarily need some cute pair of earrings that you saw. You don't necessarily need a lot of these things. But you do, in fact, need your medication. I think that the best uh, thing to happen in this scenario is for countries to really understand um, that, that there is a level, and I'm sure, and of course, they have this right now, but even when it comes to what, what the situation with the pandemic has actually shown us, I think countries need to understand there is a production that needs to be uh, national, uh, and that production should be one that is closely related to national security, not just the military national security, but the uh, national security in terms of uh, are all of my people with diabetes going to die because I don't have insulin? So the health security of the people in the country. So while they might either they might either produce those medications themselves or at least have the option and the possibility to um, start producing them if there is a lack of these things on the market, to have companies that can go, yes, we have the recipe, we have the knowledge, we have the equipment, we're going to start making this, still make money off of it, obviously, uh, because what else is going to fund the making of those medications in the first place? Um, so we're going to start making these and we're going to start providing these to the public. So I think that there are some services and some things that perhaps some countries need to look at and really think about whether or not they should at least have the option to um, have some companies in their country uh, give those companies the possibility to switch to producing those particular products that the people might need. And I also believe um, that even though this, this wonderful society, which is a, a, a free market society, has given us um, amazing things and a lot of goods on the market, I really think that there is something to be said about what I called previously uh, in an article, unplugged skills, which is basically the uh, possibility for you and your family to be able to live, as Americans like to say, off the grid. So if something goes really, really wrong, or if just a situation like this happens, um, that you would be able to distill your own alcohol, that you would be able to uh, maybe grow some stuff in your garden, uh, that you would know how to build some things, that you would know maybe how to work the land in case something like this would last for longer. Uh, but of course, I just think that this is something I would love to, uh, to, to encourage individuals to know how to do. So it's not something that I would say, oh, state mandated, God forbid. No. Um, this is, I think, something that individuals need to look into and, uh, and to see how they can really reap benefits off of knowing things like that. Um, so I think that's important. And that, that being said, um, it's also, I think, vital for people to understand First of all, that globalization has been with us since the beginning. Second of all, that since it is a tool, it can be used in a good way and in a bad way, and it can be interpreted in a good way and in a bad way uh, by a lot of people. Um, now, to, in that respect, um, taking a step back, looking at it for what it is, understanding that it's a tool, and that you can do wonderful things with it and that you can choose the things that you want to keep for yourself or your country and and do away with the things that are not as good for you or your country um, is also something that people need to be aware of and states need to be aware of right so you don't have to blindly do what the rest of the world is doing adapt it to what you need and understand that this is a tool but also understand that it's not going to go anywhere. No matter what form it takes, it's always going to be there to some degree or another. It's not new and it's not um, something that threatens you or your country if you know how to look at it and use it to its full potential. Because this is what happened in Romania and I've been a witness to that. So the good things came in, of course some bad things came in too. And then eventually, society realized, okay, I like the good, I'm not sure I want the bad. So they started pushing away. And because they've made choices, 
the free market of goods and ideas um, respected their choice. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of things in Romania that are still going absolutely berserk in terms of, of conversations and things that are happening. But I'm just speaking about this phenomenon that I've noticed on a very uh, local, national level. Uh, one thing with, with the supermarkets and the farmers markets that are coming back, with the national production of goods that are coming back, with all of these beautiful free market things such as Romanian handmade clothing that is now available on the internet, made from real beautiful material, 100% uh, natural and organic, all of these wonderful choices that we now have that we never would have had if we hadn't let the world in. And the best reason to let the world in and analyze and think critically about what it is that's happening and then make a choice, kind of like a sorting machine. Everything is coming in. This is good, this is bad, this is good, this is bad, this is good, this is bad. And you're sorting them out, but you're free to do it. Because the best argument against this is what happened to my country, to Romania, right after the communist regime. I keep calling it communist, but it's just socialist. Um, yeah, it was a traumatic time in our history. But what happened right after uh, our, our uh, socialists were defeated was that the desire that people had to have things, to travel the world, to embrace the West, took over completely. And it wasn't necessarily a good thing. Um, you could see that those people had a sadness in their hearts and they had such a desire to consume Western goods that they became glutton. Gluttons for years and years and years. They would gather and gather and go to uh, different countries and spend and and, and and they were chasing something and they didn't know what it was that they were chasing and then a lot of them were disillusioned with the west oh i thought it was so much more perfect so much more and they realized that that most of the things that they were dreaming about most of the things that they thought were better most of the things that they were doing were just for nothing really and then they slowed down and they realized where they were and they started educating themselves and they took it easier and slower and things started working. But you see, that psychological effect of people desiring something so badly that they would smuggle it into the black market, like we would, uh, like they would watch uh, back then uh, American movies on, on pirated tapes and stuff like that. You know, you can't keep the world out, it's gonna come in. But one of the most detrimental things the dreaming about the world that's out there that you can't touch is that it gives you the impression that there is such a thing as perfection. That thing far away in the distance that you can't touch, but you hear about, and you know that it makes quality products, and you know that it does things a lot better, and you know that it's richer than you, that thing you can't touch, that is Eden. That is perfection. And you live thinking that there is such a thing as a perfect system. And then once you actually make contact with that system, you're disillusioned, you're saddened, and you're confused. Or you still blindly think that's a perfect system. So you leave your country, you go over there, you live in that system, and you never realize that, you know, now you're there, now you have to uh, be vigilant about your rights, now you have to uh, do a lot of uh, social uh, things that people do over there now you have to adapt you don't realize that because you in your mind still think oh this is a perfect system so a lot of the people in Romania have had uh, issues such as this and I think this proves in the best way and also in the worst way that you can't keep the world out it's gonna come in um, either in a traumatic way or in a in, in a free way where you take personal responsibility about what it is that you accept and you sort the good from the bad. That's what globalization really is doing. It's just giving you stuff. It's giving good, it's giving bad, and you get to sort it out, but you get to make that choice as long as you're free to make it. And when you're not free, 
you're still going to be very, very curious about what it is that the other has. And that's just going to not be productive and um, really turn into a, a kind of a tragedy. And, and, and a lot of people I've heard stories in my family, they would just look back with nostalgia thinking how perfect I thought that that world was. And I got there and it wasn't. Of course it was. Nothing's perfect. So that's really it. Globalization has been here from the beginning and it's all about choices. And I believe you should be free to make your own choices, individually, nationally, globally. Thank you.